What's up everybody? Uh, today I'm going to show you how to change your character from uh, or morph from one character to another while an animation is going. So you can use this to create a werewolf animation or change your character into the Hulk. Um, in this case I'm going to change my character into the T-1000 from Terminator 2. And I have this picture just as a reference. I thought that he would be a good character because he obviously morphs into one character to another. Um, so I'm going to start off by creating a simple walk cycle. So I'm going to start on frame one. If you guys have seen my tutorials before, I just like to start from scratch with things. And walk cycles are always good to show in tutorials just because um, everybody wants to know how to do them. And they're really pretty simple to do. So if you have a character like mine that's already rigged, go to frame one. We're just going to create a scissor uh, position. Uh, front leg is going backwards. And the back one's going forward and we do the opposite with the leg or I mean the arms so front arm forward back arm back I'll do, I'm gonna freeze all of the uh, bones so I'll do a command A and then command F and that creates keyframes for every bone go to frame 12 hit Z I'll position them the opposite so back legs goes back forward leg goes forward and vice versa with the arms Command A, Command V to, or F, I'm sorry, to freeze the bones. And then on frame 24, I'm just gonna select the first keyframes, do a command or copy, Command C, Command V, copy paste. So you just have that scissor motion. And then you just go to frame six. And since the front leg's going forward first, we're gonna grab that one and bend the leg even more to step forward. And I'm gonna bend the elbow just a little bit just to get some swinging motion and 18. Do the opposite, bring that back leg up a little bit and bend the elbow on the back arm. So now we have a walk cycle really quick, but we also wanna get that bobbing motion to make it look more realistic. So I'm gonna to go to frame uh, one, use the transform layer tool. I'll just click in the box anywhere and you might have to scroll down to the bottom, but you can see it made a keyframe for frame one. I'll go to frame six, hold shift down, holding shift down so it doesn't move left or right, and I'm gonna drag it up just a little bit, just so we get that bobbing motion. You can see we have a keyframe on one and six. We'll select those. Command C, copy. Go to frame 12, copy paste, and do the same on 24, copy paste. And we don't need that last keyframe, so I'll select it and delete. And this keyframe's just a little bit off, so we'll just drag it to 18. And now we have an up and down walking motion, which looks a little bit more realistic. I'll uh, select the last keyframe on the transform layer and cycle it to two. We just do that so the first frame and the last frame don't repeat and stutter. And we'll do the same for the top, the bones. Right click, cycle to two. And now we have a repeating uh, walk cycle that we can animate to. So to morph, I'm gonna, just for the tutorial, I'm gonna go to frame 96, because that's where I want my uh, animation to start morphing. And the first thing I'll do is morph the hair, from my short hair to the T-1000's kind of little poof, pompadour, whatever that's called. So I'll, I'll select my hair layer, and you need to be careful too, like um, when you're animating to make sure you're doing the right animation. So if I hit T and select, oops, well sometimes um, you might accidentally do the transform layer tool. You need to have uh, point motion. These little dots right here in this icon means that we're going to um, alter these points. And just to be safe, I'm going to do command A and then command F just so it freezes everything, all of these all of these points, and then I'm gonna to go to frame 120, and then I'm gonna start uh, transforming the hair. So I just start moving this around just so it matches his hairstyle a little bit. And, oops. Move this back. And I, use, I just use C to curve this point but now you can see it's made uh, new keyframes for just those so 
I, I need to actually go back to um, frame 96 and I'm gonna uncurve it just to make sure that the um, animation doesn't start curving it up frame zero. Well, actually, let me select all of these. I'm gonna hit C and curve them, pull left or pull right and then left to just uh, basically create keyframes for all of the points when they curve. So if I need to curve any more, they shouldn't alter. So let's put his hair like this. Goes back a little bit. And you can always come back and fix this. This doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I'm just kind of showing you for the tutorial. So you see from 96 to 120 his hair um, morphs into a different hairstyle. And now um, I wanted to just show you real quick. Okay, my beard is actually um, a color style. And what a color style is, for those of you who haven't seen my uh, videos before, um, the eyebrows, the beard, and the hair are all on different layers. But when you have a color style applied, it changes all of the colors regardless of what layer they're on. So if I go to frame zero and select my hair color style, if I change that hair color, it changes all of the uh, colors at once, which is great. Um, it makes it a lot easier to change colors for um, different body parts. Um, in particular, when we change the skin, we're gonna go from uh, my skin tone to uh, the characters. Um, and you can see that it actually changes. Um, but this brings up a good point too. You see the hands and the mouth don't change color. That's because they're in switch layers. They, they do have color styles applied to them, but um, Anime Studio doesn't render those styles. So if I do a, a Command R and render this picture, you can see that it actually did change the skin tone of those switch layers too. You just can't see them because of, uh, it's I guess a little bug. Um, in the program. So let me undo that because I want to keep him that color until later. Um, but the beard, we want it to disappear since since our character, the T1000, doesn't have a beard at all. We don't want that style on there because we don't want it to change color. We want it to disappear. So we need to actually remove that um, style. So I'm going to go to frame zero. I'm going to hit Q. And the beard, I'm going to hit Q and select the beard by clicking on it. I'm gonna hold shift down because I also wanna grab the stroke that's associated with it. You see um, around the edges. So everything's turned checkered. And you can see the hairstyles um, apply to it right now. We don't want anything on it. So we'll just go to none. And the default, uh, it's changing it white and gray. Um, but that's an easy thing to fix. We want it to be this hair color still, just not with the style. So we'll go ahead and click on the color pickers. Oops, I don't want to fill it. Oh man, undo. Okay, so here we have, do I have the strokes selected too, I think? Okay, so we have none. And we want the stroke to be black and we want the I don't want the mouth to fill though. I want that to be that color. Okay. This is just, I don't know, this is a little glitch, an unexpected thing. It's trying to fill the mouth piece too when I have the fill turned on. And I do not want that. So let's just, I'm gonna hit Q and select just that fill and then change that first. So I'm left clicking and dragging over the hair just so that turns that back to the right color. And the stroke is already black, so I think it should be good. Yep. Yeah. So from 96 to 120, we have the hair changing up top, um, but then we want the uh, beard to fade. So I'm gonna go to frame 96, and since it doesn't have the color style onto, it's not gonna affect the eyebrows or the hair. So I'll hit Q and select the beard. 
see it turns checkered and make sure I grab those uh, strokes too and I'm going to or actually let's do just the fill again it has some kind it's something's going on with the animation so we want this to be completely full so anime studio you have to kind of trick it you have to come in here I'm gonna move the opacity up and down and hit OK that just creates a keyframe so it's solid there and then from and at 120 I want it to disappear so I'll click on the fill again and drag down the opacity and hit OK Then I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, stroke so I'll select the stroke there and it's hard to see but I'm selecting the stroke on the uh, inside here too. do the same thing just move this a little bit just so it makes a keyframe and then go to 120 and do the same thing select that fill and drag it to zero that way from 96 to 120 we have a full beard and then it kind of just disappears and we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the nose we'll just go to frame 96 select the nose um, not a very big change but we'll just go ahead and click on it make sure again that it's points that you're changing because you want to change the shape and then on fr frame 120 we'll just his is a little bit uh, longer so we'll just move it like this and again this isn't going to be perfect but uh, I really just want you guys to see you could do the same thing for the eyebrows I just want I don't want to make this uh, tutorial too long so you can see from 96 to 120 his nose morphs a little bit we can even do that for the ears um, so I'll just go to 96 click on the ears make sure it's points 120 and then we'll just morph his ear a little bit just so we get make sure that we know that it's actually changing That looks a little bit more like his ear. So we got that going on. And then let's go ahead and just do the skin color while we're at it because I do want to show you that uh, you can do this even with color styles. So we'll go to frame 96. And now I'm going to select the style itself. So I'm going to select the skin tone which um, my skin color is right now and I need to I'm gonna go ahead and use the the head so where's the head right there so I need to hit Q select the head and you can see it's got the um, it turns checkered to indicate that it's selected and I'm going to select the skin colors or skin tone oops skin tone okay this is the tricky part to get the keyframes to show up so we have the head selected I select that and skin tone Um, why isn't this working? I'm keeping this in because this is the trickiest part, is doing a color style change in the middle of an animation and seeing the keyframes themselves. I have the head selected. There it goes. It's really weird. You see how it created the selected fill color? And there's the keyframe. Um, so from here to here, it's going to remain this skin tone. And then I go to frame 120. We'll do the same thing. Hit Q. I'll select it. And I'm going to change it to a lighter color. I'll oh, see now it's not okay. No. Frame 120. Let's skin tone, and then change it to. There we go a lighter color 
and it didn't make a keyframe. It's really, it's kind of glitchy, uh, to tell you the truth. But you can see from frame one, uh, see how that just popped up? I didn't push anything. This keyframe just was created as I was moving um, the timeline around. So just be aware when you're using color styles that uh, this, this can be a little tricky. So from 96 to 120, the skin tone changes. And again, like I said, the um, mouth and the hands. Now see, that looks okay now. But it's actually, if I render it, like I said, because it's in switch layers, it just um, appears that it's not working, but it is. So just be aware of that. So if you have problems and you're like, oh, the colors aren't changing on certain aspects, that might be why. So now we have our character changing from uh, dark skin tone to light again. And now we want to do some tricky stuff. We want to change my regular shirt and my shoes and my short sleeve into a long sleeve. So this is going to be some tricky stuff um, that you're going to have to create things on frame one to actually uh, get this to work. So now we have our characters morphing a little bit. Let's 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 tackle the shirt first. So I want this to be a short sleeve shirt, and I want it to be uh, change into long sleeve. So let's go to frame zero. Let's go ahead and look at the arms. So I have the front arm. What I need to do is somehow make the sleeve uh, morph. So I think what I'm going to do is I think what I'll do is make this extend the sleeve extend and then also this forearm uh, morph a little bit so in order to do that how am I gonna do that okay I think I'm gonna have to create another arm layer. So, because the first part is gonna be easy, I'll go to frame uh, 96. I'll select the front arm and select the sleeve so it creates points. And then frame 120, I'll just go ahead and extend the sleeve down, at least down to here. But then we also need. I'm just going to do this real quick. See what this looks like. Dang it. Started morphing way ahead of time. So let's do the let's go back again. I'm going to undo. Go to frame 96. Make sure I select all the points. Command F to freeze them. And then 120. Let's move these points down. Okay, so the sleeve doesn't move until 96, and then at 96, it's going to stretch down to the elbow. So that part's okay. I'm actually going to make sure I line these up pretty good. So, on, so right there and there. But I need to somehow make this forearm a sleeve. Okay, here's what I'm thinking for the sleeve. I'm going to duplicate the front arm and go back to the beginning. And on the uh, reference layer, I'm going to select the forearm and I'm going to change it to the shirt color instead of skin tone. Because I want it to transform at the same time. Let's see, it's going to go from gray to black, just like that. Let me take, <clears throat> go to the bone layer so you can see. So right now, it's you can see that forearm is gray, and it's going to turn. But I don't want to see that until 108. So let's go ahead and go back to zero. I'll go ahead and hide the reference layer. So I'll double click on it, turn off visible, and apply. Then 108, I will double click it again, the reference layer, and say visible, and apply. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and on 108 I'll go ahead and transform this so I hit T and I'm gonna grab those points I'm gonna move them all up to the top of the or right at the elbow joint like that kind of line it up with um, the sleeve the top part of the sleeve and then go to frame 120 and then just pull those down and that's gonna be tricky because I kind of mishmashed them all together I think this is the bottom uh, oops I'm grabbing the arm let me just click on that and then pull this bottom sleeve down uh, let's see down to here and have it be the cuff of the hand or um, on the of the sleeve let's see if that works so we can't see the sleeve the top one starts to transform and it reaches the elbow at 108 and then the bottom one stretches out yeah that looks pretty cool so there it looks like the sleeves growing from 96 there is a little little error right there but we can let's do just move this over a little bit yeah that looks good and since it's the reference layer um, we shouldn't have to re-rig or anything this should just be stuck to that uh, bone now so I'll go ahead I'll fast forward I'll do the same thing for the back uh, arm real quick and then we'll get on to the shoes and then transforming the shirt too okay so I've got the both of the arms done I did use the reference layer again to create this uh, sleeve or the sleeves coming down also look to appear like they're growing and now we just want to um, let's go ahead and do the shoes uh, I'm just gonna assume that he's got kind of fancy black dress shoes for uh, his feet so we'll go to frame 96 and I'll select the front leg go ahead and hit command A command F and that's gonna freeze all the points for the point animation and then frame 120 we'll go ahead and go in here let's go ahead and reshape the shoe so it looks instead of a sneaker it's more of a dress shoe and I'm just gonna go ahead and manipulate some of the points so I'll hit A or I'm T and then I'll just change some of these to be more angular looking so it looks more like a dress shoe and actually I'm gonna hide everything else really quick over here just so I can see what I'm working with front leg and let's see I'll go ahead and curve these out so they're a little bit sharper Look more like a dress shoe. Um, actually, again, let me go ahead. I'm going to select A, hit C, and curve all of the. Oops. Let me just select the shoe. So what I'm doing right here is I'm going to change some of the uh, curve angles. So I'm just selecting the shoe and hitting C and curving them a little bit just so it makes a keyframe for everything. So as it uh, so it doesn't transform or morph before 96. Let me go back a little bit. I'm going to actually undo quite a bit. Go back to the original. I think that's the original shoe. And then I'll hit T. Like I said, I'm going to select all of the parts of the shoe. Hit C and just kind of 
move the curve around just a little bit so it stays the same uh, looks the same and then, then now we'll go ahead and try and reshape that again and as with everything this is just a lot of uh, fiddling around um, just keep messing with stuff till it looks right so I'm trying to make this shoe look a little bit more uh, angular I guess you sh I could say just more of like a dress shoe so I'm gonna first um, change the shape like this and then I have color styles on the shoe also so that's it's regular and then at 96 it morphs into a more of a dress shoe like that but then we also need to um, change the color so again uh, this is just going to be the same process that we did earlier and starting on 96 I'll go um, to the front leg I'll go ahead and select um, the shoe and I have two shoe colors just the gray and the white there's one and two so we'll go to styles I think it's shoe color one is the main one and uh, let's see okay like I said I, it's a little tricky I, I always get a little mixed up with this um, so let's make sure we have this shoe color one okay there it goes it made a keyframe and then uh, 120 we'll go ahead and change that shoe color one to black also like that and I want to change the stroke to gray just so it's matching the rest of his outfit like that um, let me make sure you know, select that shoe color two. See, I'm having a little trouble with the uh, stroke again. Okay, so that's turning those black. Let's do the same thing with, let's at least get the white going the same too. So, style shoe color two, which is this white. and use the fill to make those black too so let's make sure oh see no nope. colors changing way too early for both of them so let me hit uh, undo let's go back to 96 this is where 96 is where we want the color to change. Let's select shoe color one. Oops. So we got that selected. And shoe color one. There we go. There's the fill. And then by 120, we want it to turn black. So that's good for the first one. 96. Let's hit Q, select the white. This is shoe color two. Need to make sure shoe color two. Hmm. See, I'm not quite sure how to set that keyframe. Shoe color two. It's just really, really touchy. We 
shoe color two. There it goes. So it's set the keyframe and then 120. If any of you guys know, or when you're watching it, know exactly how the keyframe's set, let me know because it's really, it's really just really tricky to uh, get the keyframes to pop in and out. So there they're normal and then they both change. And I don't want this circle to appear anymore on the shoe. So on front leg, I'm just gonna go ahead and select that circle just so it makes keyframes for the points and then on 120 I'll go ahead and just shrink it so it's so small you can't even see it anymore I could do the um, fade it but that would mean removing the color style and all that stuff and I think it'll just be better if I just shrink it and we'll do the same thing with the back leg or where it has the back shoe and command A, command F, freezing all the points. And then this time we just need to go ahead and change the shape. Actually, let me do the same thing. Select all of, all of the points, hit C, curve it just a little bit, just so it makes the uh, curve points uh, keyframe. And now I can go in and kind of reshape this so it's a little more angular. Shrink this circle down to change these angles so it's a little sharper, more of a dress shoe. Oops. And Most of my tutorials are just me messing around and figuring out how I would um, do these type of things. So it's not really, maybe it may not be the best way to do it, but it's just the way that I've, I've figured out to do something. So I would just say, I would encourage you guys just to do the same. You know, if you want to uh, try something out, just, just go for it and see if it works or not. Um, let's see. Let's see if I did that right. Okay, the shoe's normal all the way through to 96. And then it morphs into that dress shoe. All right, that looks pretty good. Mmm, that front one's looking not as cool. <laughs> front leg. Let's make sure this is... Oops. Hit T, move some of these points around. Make sure that... That looks a little better. I think I just had the... Uh... Just adjusting stuff, making the tongue a little smaller. And again, all of these parts, since we're using reference layers or just using the original layers, you don't have to rebind anything. Now, once we get this character looking like the T2000, um, it's it's still going to be fully rigged. So he's starting to look like a police officer a little bit more. I mean, all, his uniform's all black, but now we're missing a few things. We're missing his glasses, and we're also... His shirt's not um, a collared shirt, and um, we just need to make some more um, other elements to make this uh, more complete. So, let me go back to frame zero, because that's where we're going to have to create... Um, if we're going to add anything to our character, we have to do it on frame zero. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by doing... Uh, new vector layer and we're just gonna call this glasses because he also wears those uh, big police officer glasses you know the guys that on chips they used to wear <laughs> if you guys don't know what chips is it's a really old show um, about the uh, California Highway Patrol officers <laughs> um, yeah that just shows my age so glasses I'll go ahead and draw them first um, let's go ahead and zoom in and they're gonna be under the face layer 
and I'll go ahead and start by, I always like uh, using squares, even if I'm doing something kind of round. And I'll go ahead and draw a square. Oh, I want a stroke too. So we'll have a black stroke. Let's change these colors. And hold shift down, black stroke, the fill. Right now we'll just make it gray for now. I hit S, I'm gonna draw a square over uh, my character's eye. And kind of just reshape it a little bit, use the curve tool. Bust that out. I'll select it, hit T, select it, Command C, Command V to copy and paste. Oops. Command C, Command V, paste. So I have another one. And I don't wanna move the nose or anything, so I'm actually just gonna reshape this instead of trying to put it behind the nose. Um, add some more points. And round these out. Round this out. Hit A. I'm gonna make a little uh, bridge for the nose on the glasses. Hitting U. Just making that color appear. Go ahead and do the same thing. Hit A. Oops. Hit A. Add a point. Click and drag again so it looks like the glasses are going behind the ear. Hit U. Validate the shape by hitting space bar. So we got the glasses, the bar going in the back like that. And go like that. So that's pretty cool, decent looking. Again, you can fix it later if it doesn't look quite right to you. Let me make the frames a little bit uh, thicker. So I'm gonna hit T, hold shift down, and just I'm just selecting everything, and then hitting W and just making the glass frames a little thicker. And then uh, those police officer glasses usually look pretty shiny, like one-way mirror type thing. So instead of having gray, I'll go ahead and hit Q, select the uh, fill, hold shift down, select both sides. And then I'm gonna just go up to effect and we'll fill this in with a gradient. And I'm gonna just click on the this gradient, this color from black to white and um, you can see when I click on it, it starts just making these little boxes. We can move those boxes around and so it looks more like a reflection. Um, I'll even, let's get that a little lighter. And yeah, you can double click on them and go ahead and uh, move your color pick around so you can see the kind of gradient right there. I'll hit okay. And I'm just gonna turn the reflection on those glasses. If I click off it, you can see what it actually looks like. Um, well, actually not, it's pretty hard to see. If I render it, then you can see the um, reflection in those classes a little easier. And let's go ahead and move this down. It's hard to see in the preview, but that's okay. We'll just leave them like that for now. And I'm gonna hit Q again. I think that should be good. Let me render it real quick. Okay. But again, we don't want to see, we want to make the glasses seem as if they're just appearing um, as he's morphing. So we'll double click. Let's hold on, let's make sure. Yeah, since we're, we've created the glasses inside of our character, um, inside the rig, you can see they're moving along with the character as well. Um, but I think I should put him in the face, uh, on the very top of the face. Because, let me, let me undo that. The reason I'm going to do that is because I think I don't have, it's following the character because of the up and down, but I don't think it's bound to anything. Yeah, see when I move my character, the glasses aren't sticking with it. So... Go back to frame zero, 
Drop that under the face. It's resized it a little bit. That's okay. We'll just hit T and blow that up. Um, it's being masked out because I have masking on my uh, face layers. So I'll double click that and go to masking and say don't mask this layer and apply just so the glasses stick outside of the uh, edge over here. I'll kind of reposition those again. Try and get that right, the right size of what I had before. It's pretty close. Uh, right about there. So it's going right behind the ear. And I think now, let's go in the timeline and check it real quick. Since the uh, entire face is bound, I think when I move my character, yeah, the glasses are already connected and you don't have to bind them or rig them or anything like that. But we don't want to see those until we're transforming. So let's go ahead and go to uh, frame zero, double click on our glasses, uncheck visible and apply. So they're hidden, can't see them. And then 96, we want to start seeing them. So let's go to that and double click glasses, make them visible, apply and okay. So that they're, uh, they just kind of pop in now. But we still want to animate them to look like they're morphing too, like they're just kind of growing. So this is an opportunity to use um, the stroke um, stroke exposure tool, which is really cool. So let's go to frame 96 and we can see the glasses. And we have our stroke selected right now. And you can see I'm going to select, is it this one right here? Stroke exposure tool, this one right here. And I'm just going to click and drag over to the left. And you can see it looks like it's erasing the strokes. Um, it's not erasing them. It's just going, we're just going to animate them so they kind of appear. So just drag them so they completely disappear. And our character transforms at 120. So we'll go to 120. And then I'll drag them back so they start to uh, redraw or animate back in until they're all completely done. So now we have nothing and then it appears as if they're growing. And our glasses also appear. So it's a little hard to see, but um, let's go on frame 96. Let's go ahead and select our um, glasses also. The uh, fill inside. I'll hold shift down so I can select both of them. And I'm gonna click on, I'm gonna have none on these. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting, oops, let's do that. I have them selected and you can tell by the checkered um, look of it. Um, I took off the style, there was actually, I still have the shoe style on there, didn't need that. But I want to, make them see through. So I'm going to drag that down to zero, the opacity. And then we'll let the um, frames get drawn with the stroke exposure. And actually maybe about halfway, like 108. We'll go ahead and click that, the transparency. I'm still making it uh, see through at 108. So it's creating those keyframes, and then at 120, we'll make them completely visible by just um, dragging that opacity up. So now, let's go back. And you can see we got the regular character going on here. And at 96, you can start to see the uh, glasses being drawn. And then at 108, the color starts fading in too. So now we even have the color. And actually, let's go to 120 and select the, with the glasses selected, let's actually turn down the opacity a little bit. Like right about here. Doesn't look like it did anything, but if I go ahead and hit Command R and render, you can see through the glasses a little bit, which is pretty cool. Um, that might be a little too much but let's turn that up just a little bit. 
just so it's not solid. And render that one more time. And now you can kind of see the eyes through the glasses, which is pretty cool if you're going to animate and you still want the character to uh, look through the glasses, um, you can do that. Now, this is going to be probably maybe the trickiest part. I don't know, the sleeves were kind of crazy too. But the shirt, um, we're going to have to transform the shirt and make a badge appear. The badge is just going to be like the glasses. We'll just create a new object and then animate it popping up. Um, but the shirt, we don't have enough points to create a collared shirt. So we're going to we're going to have to go back to frame 0 and add points from the beginning. And this may be kind of tricky. Let me see. Um, torso, where my shirt is. So we want it to look like it's a button-down shirt. So we're going to need a line down the center, and we're going to need some more points to make the collar appear. Um, we can't just move move these points and make it look like a collared shirt. So I'm going to be on frame zero. I'm going to hit A and add start adding some more points. So I'm going to click here in the center of the collar, and about halfway down, and then connect it to the bottom of the shirt. And then, let's see, I'm going to have to add points to kind of figure out how to make it look kind of like a collared shirt. So I'll add a point here. I think I can drag this one down and straighten it. So I'm kind of just testing right now to see how I can make it look like a collared shirt. I may need another point here, like that. Do the same thing under the head. Let me can turn that off. Maybe a couple points, just like that. And I'm just testing it out to see how it looks. Like that. Because you're going to need all of your points put in before you even go and uh, transform it. So that looks good. Probably should do another line there. And we could add a lot of a lot more details, but for right now, just for the tutorial, because I know you guys are like, this is long, way, way too long already. But um, let's just leave it at that, that many points. And I'm actually going to, I'm going to have to do some little, little trick. Add a point here and another point here because I need to make this stroke appear. So I'm selecting it and hitting U. But we don't want to see it, you know, when it's a regular t-shirt. So the reason I put the uh, points there and there is I'm going to use the width tool. So I'll just shrink that, shrink that center one and this bottom one so it doesn't look like there's um, a seam in the t-shirt. So I'm kind of just hiding the stroke in a way. So even though it's there, you can see it now, it's not going to be visible when I render it. So I'm going to make this a regular circular collar again. Curve this out. Still on frame zero. And kind of just moving my points all back into place. It's close enough. Do the same thing for this line in between. Oops. Add another point here and here. Hit W and shrink those to the point where you can't really see them. The, now the problem with adding points in after you've done an animation or anything like that is sometimes they're not bound correctly. And we'll, we'll test that out real quick and see how things are moving. Turn the face back on. And it looks like everything's still bound, so we, we're, we're all right. If I hit Render, Command-R, you can see this, the collar, the seam is not there, and also the um, seam right there is uh, gone too. I don't, the collar doesn't look quite right, but um, you guys can just fix that as as you see fit. Um, 
Actually, I'll just move. Oops. Make sure you're on frame zero. Um, fix that. Curve it around like that. And we, always, we already have it uh, changing to black. So all we need to do is go to 96. We'll hit uh, Command A, Command F to freeze all of those points. So we have them there. And then at 120, we'll go ahead and change the collar. So we'll morph it, oops, by hitting T and selecting points and moving those around. Oh, let's do the curve points too. Let me hit, uh, go back to 96. I'm gonna do a command A, hit C, move a little bit to the left and right. You can't even see anything move, but it just makes those curve uh, starting points, key, key frames, I should say. So when I go into 120 and like move this point and then hit C and curve it so it looks like a collar, it's not gonna do that um, anywhere in the beginning of the animation. So I'll go here and that moves there. And I'm just reshaping everything again. Making that look like a collar. It's not super great, but you guys get the idea. So now I need to make that seam appear. So I'm gonna go actually to Frame 96, and I'm gonna select those, oops, 96, let's find that. So there's that point, that point in the center, and this one. Um, and all I'm doing is I'm selecting the points and then dragging it so you can to the right and then to the left, just so it makes a keyframe for the width. You can see down here. Same thing with, let me make sure I get the right one. That's it. W to the right, to the left. I don't think I got the right one, okay. There we go. And do the same thing with the top. Make sure I got the right point. Hit W, right to the left. So it still looks like it's, it's gone, but I just need a starting keyframe. Go to 120, and then I'll hit W and make that seam appear like that. I could even move the shirt so it looks a little bit, uh, a little bit better. We have our regular character, t-shirt, long or short sleeves, and then from 96, you can see his sleeves grow, his shoes change, loses the beard, his head changes, gets some glasses, and what's going on with the arms here? Let me. S I think the reference layer is supposed to be the shirt color. Let me go back one more time. Make sure the front arm has the shirt color. And, okay. And the back arm. Also, I'm hitting Q and selecting that forearm. Keeps changing back to the uh, skin tone. But I want just, um, just the reference layer the uh, shirt color. Let's see if that works. Okay. Well, wait, the back one, back arm. Uh, shirt color. There we go. Not sure why that keeps uh, changing. That looks good now. 
And we got the seam appearing also. Then the last thing, we can just put a little badge on him. Um, let's go to the torso where the shirt is. And I'm just gonna zoom in real quick. I'm gonna draw a badge out here on frame zero. Hitting A, just making some points. Nothing too crazy. Curve those out. Mm, that's a horrible badge, but it'll work. Um, let's go ahead and make sure it's bound to the shirt. So I'll just put it where it's supposed to be, kind of. Turn it a little bit. Eh, that's good enough. Okay. But. Mm -mm -mm. It's not bound to the shirt, so. While it's selected. Well, let's hit B. Make sure we select the uh, torso bone. The shirt bone. Then hit G. And make sure that that's uh, shield is selected or and hit bind points bind points so okay now it's moving with the uh, shirt and we're just gonna go to frame zero and for this I'm just gonna shrink it to almost non-existence and hit W so you can't see it I'm just pulling the um, Stroke, so it's really small. Go to uh, 96. I'll uh, hit W. Oops. And then make the stroke appear and also grow it. So I'll hit uh, T, select it so it creates um, a keyframe for the points and then just go to 120 and blow that up and see if that worked. So I don't think you can see it there and then it just kind of grows in, into place. But it has the shirt color on it so we don't... Let's, let me go back to frame zero and just for this object, we'll take the shirt color off. We'll say none instead. And make this the shirt color. Make the stroke gray also, just so it's not there, visible. And then we can see it grow like that. So now we've got the little shield on there too. And like I said, the, oh, see, the mouth, what looked like it was a different color, but it's because it's switch layers. So that's pretty much it. Um, I know that was kind of wonky, the tutorial, but you kind of, I kind of wanted to leave all my mistakes in just because um, I know you guys will experience the same things. But I just wanted to show you that you can actually have one character morph in color, in size, and shape and do all these kind of little cool tricks um, without re-rigging a new character and then I have um, something brand new that I can work with and I have my character walking here and let's say I want him to stop I'll go to my bones and I'll just do a command F freeze frame and then go a little bit forward and make him stop. But you, as you can see, I just wanted to let you guys know too, see, I ha the character's still rigged now. And all of his uh, bones are working. I have, you know, he can still talk. We can take the glasses off and we have this brand new uh, character with different attributes. Oops. The shoes didn't turn out right. I didn't get the strokes right, but Still, this 
tutorial is probably way too long. But anyway, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.